Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush episode review. This time we are reviewing episode 130 of Go Rush, the duel between Zion and Asaka. Now, 134 did just air uh, literally this past weekend. However, the subs currently are only up to 130. Uh, and I do want to do as many episode reviews as possible for really all of these episodes since we're pretty much in like the final stretch of this show. And I feel like most of these episodes are going to be pretty important. So please refrain from spoiling anything down below in the comments. I don't know anything that's happened beyond this episode, even though, again, four episodes have aired. And I know there's a lot of people that are in the same boat as me that are just kind of waiting for subs to come out. So um, without further ado, though, my thoughts on 130. Uh, I definitely thought it was the best episode of the arc here. We're still very early on in what we're assuming is the penultimate arc. I mean, this is only the third episode in. First episode was kind of a recap. Second episode was seeing the the Insect Club and 1010, which is Ron Ron's uh, cousin, uh, and duel UDS. UDS, of course, winning that duel. Uh, this episode, though, I felt was the, the best of the three. Um, as Zion joins forces with Goha, Yuna Goha reached out to him um, and decides to duel against... Asaka on Goha's behalf. Now, this episode uh, almost was like a love letter to Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. And I say that because these two characters or the versions of them in Sevens had one of the best duels, in my opinion, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, which was Asana versus Nail. And the setup in that duel was so similar to the setup that happened in this duel. Back in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, Nail was following Providence, and he dueled on behalf of Goha Corporation because he felt that's what you know Providence was, and he felt he was still uh, you know under the Goha umbrella. So when the Goha siblings came and kind of declared war on Yuga and his friends, uh, Nail dueled on Goha's side, even though his heart was not really there, but he just. Felt like he had to follow Providence. Asana beat him. Uh, we see later in that episode, of course, you know, Sebastian basically passes away. It's a, even though weird to say that about a chair. Um, and it was a, a really, really impactful episode all around where I feel like Nail's view of Providence kind of got broken a little bit more. Of course, it was broken in that duel against Yuga early on, but that kind of broke his um, thoughts on Providence and, and Goha and working for Goha. And I feel like very similar stuff here where Zion is following Setsuri and he believes that working for Goha and living in a predetermined future is what Setsuri is all about. And that is what um, his fate is and that's what everybody's fate should be. Of course, we know Asaka and a lot of other people in this show do not believe that doing everything just to get to a predetermined future uh, should be the way that you live your life. Like, you should not take actions that only lead to X, Y, Z. Like, you should live your life however you want to live your life, uh, despite what you believe is going to happen in the future. And, of course, everybody's perspective on that is kind of thrown off because of, you know, Yuga and wanting to become Otis and wanting to give Yuga the, the happy ending per se. And that's kind of where one of your like philosophical wars is in this show, which I think is so fascinating. So Asaka, Udius, and Ron Ron go to um, where they made the dual prototype, where Matsuba made the dual prototype. And in the warehouse, uh, Zion awaits and Zion challenges them to a duel. He's standing in their way. Him and Asaka exchanged some really, really good blows early on. You know, at one point, um, Asaka says, you know, do you really want to live in a basically hellscape just to get to this predetermined future? And Zion very coyly says, oh, that's rich coming from the person who buried Matsuba's glory with her own selfish desires, basically threw away, um, you know, the whole Matsuba legacy. And it, it really, really some deep stinging insults there makes the duel a little more personal and the duel begins and I gotta tell you I feel like this is probably Zion's final duel um I, I just get that vibe you know we're towards the end of the show this felt like the last gasp for Zion and I gotta say Nail Zion 
I think my favorite deck to watch in Rush, especially throughout the two shows, you go Dragon. I mean, Zion it plays this deck so well. The Cybers combos are so freaking fun to watch. He obviously has a Fusion Summon at one point. Then he has a Fusion Summon with three materials. Um, he's got a monster on the field at one point that is uh, buffing the Fusion Monster. And some of the effects in this duel were so specific, like Asaka used an equip spell that prevented her monster from being destroyed due to battle with a fusion specific monster, uh, which of course is what Zion had on the field at the time. Um, you know, it, it's just so funny always seeing these like Yu-Gi-Oh anime specific effects. And I feel like this duel had more of them than you would normally see, which was uh, very, very funny, I thought. And the duel goes on. And eventually, Asaka takes what is her final turn, and her dual disc actually fails. Um, her dual disc says error, and go high Yuna. We see Yuna with Yu Hiotis and Zuijo and Yuamu, and Yuna has successfully shut off her dueling. And she announces that going forward, the only way that anybody can duel is with Goha Corporation's approval which obviously is ridiculous. You know, I think uh, Asaka said it best before the duel began. Hell, living hell, I believe she said, or hellscape. And that is absolutely accurate uh, to have to ask permission to do something as simple and as fun as dueling, especially in, of course, a Yu-Gi-Oh world, uh, really shows, like, the evil of Goha Corporation. And I think it shows also the, the power hungriness of Goha Yuna. You know, she really forcefully completely took over this entire city. It was Matsuba Town. Uh, she took over this entire city, and she's got so much control. But Asaka does something awesome. She leaves very briefly, and she gets R0. Now, this was pointed out to me by some people uh, while I was doing my watch along. R0 was actually shown in Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, which is super, super cool. The machines look incredibly similar. Sure, there are a couple of minor alteration differences, but very similar machines. This is what Yuga showed to Asana at the end of episode 39, at the end of the third arc after they finished their duel, to try and cheer her up. Of course, R6 was the machine that Asana was most famously known for using throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, but we get to see the Go Rush debut of R0, a machine that was also in Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Really, really cool. And because that machine is so old, it predates the technology that Goha is using. And so Goha is unable to get to the machine and unable to shut the machine off. And so the duel is able to continue. And by this point as well, Zion has kind of completely flipped from the thoughts he had in the beginning of the episode. Now, I think always he wanted this duel to prove to him that Setsuri was incorrect in the fact that, like, he was there and that everything needed to be predetermined. He was basically begging Asaka to show him the truth and to defeat him in this duel. I don't, I don't remember the last time I saw a Yu-Gi-Oh! duelist that wanted to lose a duel so bad so that it could basically confirm that their previous worldview was incorrect um, in believing in Setsuri and believing in that predetermined future. And so he's actually happy as Asaka is making this combo. And boy, oh boy, what a crazy freaking turn she has. Uses three different fusion summons, equips that equip spell I talked about earlier to Zion's monster because if it's equipped to a non-worm monster, that monster loses a thousand attack points for every fusion monster on the field. Four fusion monsters, it loses 4,000 attack points and that is how Asaka is able to get over this thing, defeat it, and get the win. And of course, Zion at the end of this duel declares that he is quitting Setsuri and that's why I just feel like this was a beautiful final chapter for Zion's character. He came kind of full circle, no longer believes in Setsuri. And by the way, the the flashbacks were very weird to me. The begin the episode started with a flashback of baby Zion and this character that I don't know if we're supposed to know who they are. I genuinely believe it's the mystery girl. Now, if you've watched my Go Rush stuff for a while, you know, I, I've even done a theory video on it. You know, I think that mystery girl is going to be pretty important when it's all said and done. 
Um, now, I've felt that way for about 50 episodes now. Of course, nothing's happened in those 50 episodes. I could end up being totally wrong. But I think it's the mystery girl. That mystery girl was on Zion's ship uh, in last season, which was very weird because Zion's ship was obviously in space and she was somehow there, uh, which to me says everything that you need to know, that there is some power that this girl has. Um, so I think she has a connection to Zion already. That's who I believe this character is. But very weird flashback and Zion basically says to this character that he just wants to make furniture to make people happy. Um, and of course the prototype that he drew is obviously supposed to be Sebastian, a character that is very important to nail in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. And the connections between Sevens and Go Rush, I feel are getting more and more connected and rooted in each other as the show has gone on. Remember the Lug in one of the previous episodes drew a comic of the Luke man and drew Tiger on the comic, which we all thought was pretty crazy. This to me is just as crazy where Zion draws a prototype of an early furniture design and it's clearly supposed to be Sebastian. So, you know, I don't know what that means for the timelines. I know the timelines are probably all effed up now because Yuga showed up, but I think that is so, so interesting that the two alien variants in uh, the Lug to Luke and Zion to Nail are now doing things and like basically drawing things. They both drew things that have to do very heavily with things that happened in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. What does it all mean? I don't know. Maybe it's cool Easter eggs. The R0 Easter egg was very cool. I don't really know. But that's how the episode... Oh, another really important thing. Uh, 1010 and the Ninja Brigade ends up coming up huge, right? They give UDS and Co. the passcode to get into this um, facility. And then also, she's driving Yuna in the limo, unbeknownst to Yuna, so that they're able to get to the facility where Yuna is using the tech to control all of the dueling. And they literally blow it up. Uh, they literally put some bombs in the uh, computer and blow it up. So Yuna does not currently have the ability to control everybody's dueling. So that plot point did not last too long, which thank God it didn't because things would have gotten very boring and she probably would not have been authorizing many duels. So the Ninja Brigade 1010, you know what? They're already proving huge in terms of value and assets to Team Udius here, which is really, really cool. Can you fully trust them? I don't really know. Ron Ron clearly doesn't trust them, but they did two things in this episode that were incredibly crucial and helpful to Udius and company, and I think that's important to remember and to note as well. But guys, those are my thoughts on episode 130 here, Zion versus Asaka. Like the episode a lot, it's not going to be a top 10 duel like Asana and Nail was in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, um, but I still thought it was a very above average duel and overall a very good episode and had a lot of really, really cool fusion summonings. I think there were like five or six fusions in this episode. Super cool. Let me know all your thoughts on Go Rush 130 down below. We probably only have about 20 20-ish episodes left. So, you know, I want to hear all the theories and predictions and thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. Take care, guys.